Oh, hi. Well, Katie here. Um, sorry, I haven't um, updated my um, vlog for quite a while. Um, but, um, yeah, um, I'll just take a sip of water. Um, <coughs> so, yeah. Um, well, I don't know whether anything, you know, major has happened. I'm still in, I'm still shielding at the moment, so I haven't really got anything major to report. I'm just going to adjust this camera because I think it's at an angle. Let's see, well, I'm very messy. <laughs> but there we go. We'll just have to cope with my messiness. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm the thing really kind of major to report. Um, I um, All I can say now is I've been on hormones for, um, I, I know, eight months at least. So, um, I, um, yeah, I started probably properly with oestrogen um, in last November, um, but I was having sort of like really light doses of um, oestrogen via patches um, as early as last August. So I could say I've been almost a year on oestrogen, but with the oestrogel and like keeping my oestrogen level at 700 and my testosterone level, well that's been 0 0.3 or whatever for like two years because I was on blockers before for about a year. So um, yeah, that's how long I've been on hormones. Now after sort of eight to nine months of like being on the normal sort of average um, amount of oestrogen that uh, any other female is on, um, I, um, I've started to notice a few changes and it's really, it's really good because um, like the first change I noticed was about sort of maybe three months in, um, but I'd already been on testosterone blocker for like a year before then, but the first change I noticed was um, my body hair, my, my skin got really soft and like when I shaved my legs or sort of put beat on my arms to get rid of, rid of hair, hair um, it, um, I didn't have to redo it like for months and now like the last time I shaved my legs it must have been maybe March, I don't know, probably before then and I still, I mean they still don't have any hair on them. Um, and I haven't really been bothering because I've been indoors and everything, so I haven't really kind of <laughs> bothered much with any kind of uh, sort of <clears throat> regimen of any sort, any sort of beauty regimen or whatever. Um, but um, yeah, and so like I haven't got much hair to come back on my arms either, and I think I must have beated them like in December. So yeah, so that's what I noticed first of all, and then I noticed um, my some breast development and um, I'd say about two months ago so it's taken about six months but I noticed my um, breasts had started to change shape and um, so and then like and now I'm kind of like maybe an, an A cup perhaps I don't know but um, I'm waiting to see you know if I'll get any more breast development because um, I think most trans women apparently only get to A cup size and usually a lot of them opt to have breast enhancement surgery. Um, so yeah, but I'm going to wait like for about three years while the full um, effects of the hormones take um, come underway. Um, because they say it takes about three years on average for the full effects of the hormones to be, um, <coughs> to, to sort of like, you know, to, for them to have their full effect on body, though we're all different, I mean it varies wherever, you know, to, to according to the individual. Um, so yeah, and um, the other thing I noticed as well was I've got a lot more, kind of my cheeks have filled out a lot more, and my chin has kind of like changed shape a little bit, so it's more kind of um, less rounded and more like maybe pointy at the sides, kind of goes in like that. So. I'm quite pleased about that. Um, the areas that I don't like most about my face uh, are the, um, all of it, no, not all of it. Uh, I don't like the um, dark circles under my eyes. Um, 
Now I was born with those, so um, I have heard that. So, so it's so I, I have heard that there's a procedure available where you can actually get like an injection um, by there, like underneath your eyes, and it sort of um, gets rid of the dark circles. So. I'm going to be considering having that done. It lasts about two years, I think. It's quite expensive. It costs about maybe £700 or something, £800. But they say it lasts like um, a year to two years. So I might have that done, you know, when um, lockdown ends. Um, so, yeah, I'll, I'm going to be doing that. And also, well, my chin, um, it's like I don't like my chin because it's, at the moment, um, it's kind of, um, I've got a massive like overbite between my lower set of teeth and my upper set of teeth. So when I get to the stage with my um, orthodontist treatment, that, uh, for, for the, um, when the orthodontist decides that um, I'm ready, I'm going to have a jaw realignment so, so that my lower set of teeth um, correspond to my upper set of teeth. If that makes sense. So they, um, and then my jaw will be surgically broken, and um, which is scary. And and then um, they're going to pin it back together with literally with metal pins, apparently. So um, goodness knows what will happen if I ever ha when I, if I have to go through airport security, which I probably will in you know some time. I haven't been away for ages, but. You know, if I have to go through like metal detectors and things, I'm going to be setting them off all the time. And it's difficult enough being like a trans woman when you're going through uh, <laughs> in the airports anyway, you know. So if you set the alarm off. So yeah. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to have that done. And um, I'm not sure. It's like a one, I think it's like an overnight stay in hospital. But um, after that then, I don't know what the recovery time is. I think it's about two weeks. I'm going to have those two things done, so yeah, so yeah, I mean that, that's all I wanted to say really, I haven't been doing much, I've been in the, ho in the house working from home, doing data input, um, I, the only times I've actually gone out was to go over to the GP surgery across the road to um, either have my blood tested or um, have like an injection, like my Zolodex injection, for, that's like the testosterone blocker that I um, I have, so, and that lasts for three months. So yeah, I haven't been out at all really. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, I did actually on um, the other night. I had a really bad health scare because um, my blood pressure um, had risen really high. Um, it was something like um, 177 over. 137 at one stage and my pulse rate was something like I don't know like 120 something so it was ridiculous and um, I've got a home blood pressure testing kit here actually by, my, by the side of me so I've got that and um but I um yeah so I kind of did a blood test re blood pressure reading because I haven't done one for ages you know just to check sort of like what my blood pressure was and I had the shock of my life and then it just kept on going up then so maybe because I was worried about it so I ended up phoning 111 which is the NHS number that's kind of not emergency but um, something health concern that you have and um, so I spoke to a couple of people on there and eventually um, they sent out a, a doctor to me and so this was at midnight that this started to happen so um, the doctor came to my house at uh, 4 a.m. So, because um, I kind of like, it was quite late when I actually phoned. You know, it was like 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock. So, um, yeah, and um, fortunately, um, say fortunately, not unfortunately, um, my, um, the doctor checked my, um, <laughs> my, my heart rates with his stethoscope and he said, um, oh, well, he said, your um, heart rate's okay. He said, so you're not in danger of a heart attack or stroke. But what he did was inform my GP and I contacted my GP, spoke with him yesterday and um, the GP is going to up my dose of um, blood pressure meds. So he said, continue to
Oh, so I don't know what happened there. <laughs> My um, camera cut out the battery. Well, I do know what happened. The battery ran out. So I had to go and charge it. The battery ran out. So I had to go and charge it. Pardon my grammar. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Um, so I had the hypertensive crisis um, the other night. And the night doctor came out to me. And my GP has now prescribed me um, stronger um, blood pressure meds. So, um, yeah. So that's all okay, hopefully. Um, one thing I hope that they don't do is um, take me off hormones, but I don't think they will, because I know other people who have high blood pressure who are still on hormones, and actually when I had my blood pressure tested last, which was a long time ago, it was back in March, um, it was fine, and I'd already been on um, the same dose of um, estrogel for like five months before, so um, I, you know, I was fine, so yeah. I've got such a weird way of saying things like, I just confuse everyone. I'm just, you know, rubbish at this, to be honest. But there we go. Enough of the self, self-loathing. Um, so, yeah. Um, and the other thing I wanted to talk about was, um, <laughs> well, Posey Parker has been at it again. I mean, um, she was in um, Hyde Park in Speaker's Corner a couple of weeks ago, you know, and okay, well, she's got every right to sort of go there and, like anyone else, and spout offensive rubbish, you know, and absurd rubbish, which is what she did. And she, I see she also had, like, a sort of army of, of male, um, sort of either followers or, like, some kind of security army that she's got, but obviously no... no trans people turned up because she wasn't really important enough um, to, you know, for people to turn up anyway. You know, they, we, we know what she's like and we know where it comes from. And anyway, the other day she, um, <laughs> she paid a lot of money apparently, according to what she said, she paid a lot of money to um, have this poster put up in, um, at, Edinburgh, at one of the stations in Edinburgh, is it Waverley Station? Um, and um, basically it said, it was another vague one, like the adult human female one, so most people who aren't familiar with this whole sort of um, war between, you know, well, it's the turfs basically picking on trans people in my opinion, um, <laughs> people who aren't familiar with what they get up to and the insidious nature of their propaganda um, wouldn't know what it was on about, it basically said, I love, I heart, J.K. Rowling, Rowling, sorry, that's her name, Rowling, that's what she pronounces it. So yeah, so she actually had this sort of thing, you know, I, I heart J.K. Rowling, you know, like you used to get those t-shirts, I heart New York, and stuff like that, you know, and all that. Well, yeah, so she had that put up at um, one of the stations in Edinburgh, and um, within about 24 hours, Network Rail took it down because it violated their policy um, of um, not allowing um, extremist um, groups and organisations to promote hatred um, on Network Rail premises. So, um, yeah, so good for you, Network Rail. Round of applause. So, um, and I bet Posey is hopping mad now and the right-wing press are going to make something of this. Oh, she's being cancelled, you know. Oh, the trans activists intimidate her. They've got sort of um, really high up sort of um, people in power, you know, who are monopolising, taking over the world as a transgender agenda, blah, 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 blah. But, yeah, um, she'll rant a bit and then it will be forgotten. Because I think people are just getting wise to this now, you know. I mean, it's quite a common practice for the TIRFs to sticker places like, um, you know, <coughs> railway stations, for instance. And um, as I found out uh, back last year when they um, put one of their stickers in, um, one of, in Cardiff Central um, Station in the women's toilets, which I promptly tore down. And in an earlier video I have some photographs of me binning it which is where it belongs, in the bin, because um, women's toilets are for all females, whether we're cis or um, trans. And, um, yeah, and most women 
you know, in fact, all women I've met, nobody's ever objected to me being in the toilet, you know, nobody even looks at each other in the toilets, really, except when you're in the queue, and I don't know why that is, but people tend to look at each other up and down more when they're in the queue. But, yeah, so, yeah, so that's all I wanted to say, really, and, um, cheerio for now, and, um, I love you all, so, um, oh, please do leave feedback below and um, any of the issues I've covered in this video um, please um, I mean, if you've had similar experiences or um, you have any opinions on what I've said please leave below you know whether you disagree with me or not or whether you agree with me or not God I'm hopeless today <laughs> I am just hopeless you know period you know and before any turfs hear me say that yes I do realize that as a trans woman I don't have periods but I do have mood swings that's the other thing I forgot to mention about hormones I've been crying a lot and um, it might be to do with some kind of monthly cycle I don't know but um, yeah so there are emotional changes as well and um, I am actually going through female partly through female puberty and um, yet yeah, that kind of seems to get lost a lot of the time in all conversations, you know, I mean, it is a lot to go through, especially during lockdown with nobody to actually sort of guide you or, or sort of hold your hand through it, you know, and it is, you're just expected to get on with it really, you know, and I mean, puberty, I mean, is like a tough time for everyone, you know, whether you're male, female, and like your second puberty, even though you're really pleased about what the changes are, you know, when you're trans, you're still kind of, it's still quite overpowering at times. And I've been through a roller coaster of emotions over the past couple of months, and I'm sure to go, th I've got many more sort of powerful emotions yet to come, you know, maybe I should cover that in another video. But yeah, but I mean, if you've experienced any of that, you know, please do let me know, or you might be experiencing that right now. Um, so yeah, so anyway, I love you all, and thank you very much for watching, and um, I, um, I'm sorry this is such a rambling, incoherent video, so um, bye, take care, cheers.